Hello everyone. In the prior session, we discussed how a company can discard or sell an old asset, an asset they no longer need. Well, are these the only two options? Absolutely not. Some companies, what they will do is they will exchange their old asset into a new asset. You might be familiar with this on a personal level. When you want to buy a car, you might use your old car to trade it for a new one. Well, non-monetary exchanges is something very similar to this. You are exchanging, giving up your old asset. Could be vehicle, truck, machinery, warehouse, building, and getting a new asset in return. Now, the accounting treatment for such exchanges depend on whether the exchange has commercial substance or lacks commercial substance. So what is commercial substance? It refers, and we'll discuss it a little bit more in details throughout the session, whether the exchange changes the company significantly, to be specific, changes the company's future cash flow. And we'll discuss this in details, whether it has a commercial or non-commercial substance. Also, we will revisit on how to compute a gain or a loss and whether we need to record the gain or a loss. We need to remove the old asset, record the new asset because we are removing an asset, replacing it with a new asset. So some of the concepts that you learn when you learn about selling an asset will be revisited again. But exchanging an asset is an important topic and we are learning this for financial accounting perspective. Bear in mind, if you are studying for your tax course, the rules are a little bit different because the way we account for something for financial accounting is different than tax accounting just in case you are taking a tax course and you happen to be viewing this session at the end of the session we'll work a multiple choice question from farhat lectures to reinforce the concepts let's go ahead and get started before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, farhatlectures.com. Our financial accounting course is best for online students and students who are struggling in their financial accounting courses. We cover all the essentials from debits and credits, adjusting entries, closing entries, financial statements, and all balance sheet accounts. Our comprehensive course include lectures, multiple choice, true false, as well as practical exercises. Start your free trial today to help you pass your financial accounting course. Your success starts here. Let's start by defining commercial substance. In a non-monetary exchange, we say that the exchange has a commercial substance if this exchange significantly changes the company's future cash flow. What does it mean changes future cash flow? It means the amount of money will change in the future, the timing of when we receive it will change, and the riskiness it will change. It means this exchange is not only done for shuffling papers, for booking gain and losses, for accounting purposes. It has business sense. It has business use. So if the exchange has commercial substance, here's what we need to know. We need to recognize the gain on that on that exchange and we need to recognize the loss. So if we incur a loss, we need to recognize it. If we incur a gain, we need to recognize it. Now, how is this gain or this loss is recognized? We look at the asset we are given up, the book value and market value of the old asset. The asset that we are exchanging, we would look at the market and book value. Think of it as if we are selling the asset for cash, then taking this cash and buying the new asset. This is what an exchange is but since we are not selling it we're exchanging it we assume if we sell it at market value compare that to the book value we do we have a gain or a loss we book the gain we book the loss how about if we lack commercial substance you don't have to worry about what happened if we lack commercial substance it's for more advanced courses like intermediate accounting but let me tell you something I'm, I'm gonna give you the answer if it lacks commercial substance we always recognize the loss whether it has or it lacks commercial substance. But if it lacks commercial substance, you cannot recognize the gain. What do you with the gain? You defer the gain. Do you have to know what that means? Absolutely not. But just in case you have the curiosity. Let's take a look at an example to illustrate this concept. A company acquires a $60,000 computer system. In exchange, the company trades the old computer system with cash. So we want to buy a computer system. 
we have to pay 60,000. We don't have 60,000. So we gave up the old system. The old system has a cost of 50 and accumulated depreciation of 40. It means the book value equal to 10,000. This is what you should be doing now. Now, prepare the entries to record the trade under two different assumptions where the exchange has commercial substance and the old system, they gave us $6,000 for the old system. So they say, okay, What's going to happen is this. You ha we, the seller wants 60000 in value. Well, you gave them the old system plus cash. Under the first scenario, they said, the, we're going to give you 6000 for the old system. It means the fair market value of the old system is 6. The book value is 10. Notice under the first scenario, you have a loss of 4000 under the second scenario, we assume they gave you 12,000 for the old system. So let's take a look at the computation and the journal entry. First, the book value of the old system is 10. The fair market value is 6. How did we find out the fair market value? They told us they, they're giving us 6,000 because it's worth 6,000. Now, on a problem, they may tell you the fair value is such and such, or if the seller gave you a trade in, that's your value. Therefore, you have a loss of 4,000. Well, if you have a loss at four, it means you they gave you exactly 6,000, as if they gave you $6,000 cash. That's what they gave you, $6,000 cash. You need 60,000. Well, if they gave you for the trade 6,000, this is for the trade, you have to come up with an additional $54,000 in cash to pay off for this asset. Therefore, here's the journal entry. Let's start with, with the easy part. We have to credit the old equipment and debit its accumulated depreciation. This should be easy. You remember in the prior session, I told you once you get rid of an asset, you credit, you credit the accumulate, uh, you credit the asset itself you credit the asset and debit its accumulated depreciation. Let me highlight this. Okay, that, that, that doesn't change. Now we said we have a loss. You debit the loss. Since we have a loss, we debit the loss and we computed the loss above. Then we paid cash 54,000. We credit cash and the new asset is for 60,000. Remember, if they want $60,000, we have to give up $60,000. $60, what did we give up? We gave up cash of 54 plus an old asset that's worth 6,000. Let's change the scenario and assume in here they gave us 12,000. In other words, the old system has a value of 12,000. The book value is 10. If we sold the old system, we'd have had a gain of 2,000, so we have a gain. Well, if the asset, if they want 60,000, and the old system, the fair market value is 12. We only have to pay cash 48. Let's look at the journal entry. Again, we have to remove the old asset, remove its accumulated depreciation. This does not change. We, ha we have to credit cash 48, credit the gain, the, gain the, the credit is a gain, and we debit the new asset at 60,000. Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from FarhatLectures.com. A company decided to trade an old van with a historical cost of 48 and accumulated depreciation of 24. 48 minus 24 will give us a book value of 24 thousand for this asset on that date the van was traded with a new van with an estimated 20 year useful life and a fair market value of 45 it means the new van they want us they want they want forty five thousand dollar for it the, the new van is worth 45 simple you pay them cash you, you give them forty five thousand worth of inventory worth of gold worth of whatever they want forty five thousand the company paid thirty three thousand dollar in cash Plus, they give up the old van. So, how much is the old van? Because we're not told what the old van is, but we can conclude what the old van is. Remember, they want 45, we have to give up 45. We gave up $33,000 in cash. So, the old van must have been worth how much? The old van must be worth 12000 12, 
because 33 plus 12 equal to 45. They did not tell you what the old van is. Sometimes they may tell you what the old van is. They don't tell you what the cash. We know that we need to come up with $45,000 of value. Now, if the old van is 12 and the book value is 24, we are at a loss of 12. So let's see what we are giving here. Given the information above, the new van should be recorded at what, at what value? Well, it's the value, the fair market value of the van, 45,000. If they want 45,000, we have to give up 45,000. We record it at what we gave up in fair market value because that's what they want. They want 45,000. Therefore, the new van is recorded at 45,000. And we assume here that the transaction has commercial substance. Even if it does not, we still recognize the loss. It does not make a difference. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures. Look at additional MCQs, true, false. Additional resources that's going to help you, whether you are financial accounting students, a CPA candidate, CMA candidate, invest in yourself. Good luck and stay safe.